A question that I'm frequently asked is, are supplements good past their expiration date? In other words, a lot, uh, well, the answer to that is yes and no is the best way to answer it. Vitamins don't expire in the traditional sense. Instead of being unsafe to ingest, they simply become less potent. In other words, basically, the date you see on vitamin bottles or supplements uh, where it says good, good uh, until or used by, that date is basically the what that what that means is that's the date of the final guaranteed potency. In other words, what they're saying is that that particular product, uh, the potency is not guaranteed past that that date. Now, does this mean that past a certain date that it's kind of like Cinderella, where the, you know the coach turns into a pumpkin, where you know, if you use a supplement two days after the expiration date, it's no good. Not at all. Not at all. And that's what I'm going to clarify in this video. The expiration date on a supplement indicates, again, the last date that the potency of the supplement is guaranteed. Companies are also legally required to provide stability data that support the label claim. For example, the product will have 100% of its listed ingredients for the duration of the expir expiration period. To do so, manufacturers test bottled nutritional supplements in stability chambers to determine the expiration date. That's how they figure it out. That's because most of the ingredients in vitamins and dietary supplements break down gradually, very gradually. This means they become less effective over time. And the amount of time it takes for supplements to lose a lot of their potency is surprisingly long. A lot of you probably get rid of supplements. Uh, maybe you've had it around for a year or more, and you toss it. You figure it's no good. You're probably throwing away good supplements that are still have a, that still have a lot of their potency. You're making a big mistake. Ingredients such as vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, and herbal extracts do start to decompose the minute they're manufactured, and they continue to do so gradually over time. Uh, and now if you, if you expose it to heat, humidity, light, and air, that can cause the nutrients to break down more rapidly. So if you want to extend the life of any supplement, whether it's a powder or a pill, you always want to keep it in a cool, dry place, away from humidity, away from light, and away from heat. Minerals such as calcium, iron, and zinc do not degrade when stored properly. In other words, you can keep minerals indefinitely. They don't break down. In other words, you can take a mineral supplement 10 years after the expiration date, you're getting the full potency. That, that applies to minerals. Some nutrients, such as certain B vitamins, such as B folic acid and, and other vitamins, such as vitamins C and D and beta carotene, they deteriorate a little bit more quickly than others. Manufacturers may beef up their strength by adding 30 to 40 percent more than what's, on, what's stated on the label. In other words, to, to uh, maintain the uh, uh, stability of the product all the way up to the expiration date, the, the manufacturers will actually often add 40% more of the nutrient that's on the label. That's why when you see a lot of analysis of these supplements, uh, the, the content of the active ingredient shows up to be more than stated on the label, but that's done purposely by the manufacturers to ensure that the product is still uh, stable and offering full potency all the way to the expiration date. That's basically a guarantee. Uh, doing so ensures that these nutrients are 100% strength at the time of expiration. Adding a drying agent or desiccant to bottles of vitamins. You ever see that? You see like when you open a bottle of vitamins, they have these little kind of, uh, I don't know how to describe it, these little powders. They're in a little, little uh, I don't know how to describe it. You see these little, these little inserted things in vitamin bottles. Basically, those things are to absorb moisture. You know, don't throw them away. When you open the vitamins, keep them in there because it absorbs moisture. And uh, they're, 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 they're called desiccants. They absorb moisture and they, and they extend the life of the supplement. So you don't want to throw away those little things you find in vitamin bottles. And, you know, they're, they're there for a reason. Uh, like I say, it slows down natural nutrient degradation by absorbing moisture. Coating tablets also helps to keep supplements uh, stable long. You see some of the, for example, vitamin and minerals, a lot of times they're coated, and that's also to ensure that they're stable all the way up to the full potency. Now, the Food and Drug Administration doesn't require expiration dates on food supplements like it does, like it does on drugs. But However, most supplements do include expiration dates on the product label. 
These are often expressed as best before or used by. You'll see it says best before or used by, uh, and then it'll list a date. You know, that's voluntary. That's actually not required by the Food and Drug Administration, but the companies do that because they want to, you know, let you consumers know that this product it will be good until that particular date. And it, that, not really good. It, what they're saying is, again, that the product will, will guarantee full potency until that particular date. It's, it's good well past that date. Most supplements are good for at least two years more or more. This is what studies have shown. Most supplements are good for at least two years past the listed expiration date on the label. Now, for example, years ago, I was sent a uh, meal replacement uh, powder. Uh, it came in, in sealed kind of uh, vacuumed uh, pa uh, packets. They're very tightly packed. Uh, I didn't want to use the mail replacement at the time, so I basically kept sending me these boxes. Each one of them had about 20 of these meal replacement packets in there. And I stuck in the closet, basically, and I forgot about it. <laughs> and then about 10 years later, I remembered that I had these, and I was running out of protein powder. So I figured, well, maybe I could use these meal replacement packets. So I, I took a, a, one of the boxes out of the closet, and I opened up one of the packets. And let me tell you something. You know when protein powder has gone bad. It has a certain bad smell. And when I open these things, they, sell, they smell fresh as a daisy. There was no bad odor at all. To make a long story shorter, I, I used all the boxes. I had about 10 boxes that would all have been expired for a full decade, 10 years. I used all of them with no problem whatsoever. They did not go bad. Why? Because I kept them in a dark closet that was cool and dry. They never exposed to heat. They basically were in suspended animation for 10 years. They were perfectly good. If I would have thrown those out, I would have wasted, well, I didn't pay for them, but it would have been a waste of the supplements. Uh, like I say, uh, keeping sup if you keep the supplements exposed to light and heat, I, I see a lot of guys in the gym, they like to keep their protein powders right in the back of their car, in the trunk. Uh, I've seen them uh, go after a workout and actually mix a protein drink in the parking lot. This is not a good idea. It's not the uh, fact that they're drinking the protein drink. It's the fact that they're keeping that protein powder in the car, in the trunk. You know, out here it can get pretty hot, and uh, that protein is uh, being exposed to heat, and uh, you know, and that heat is going to break down the amino acids. So that protein powder will go bad pretty fast. Should not be kept in the car in the trunk because it's too hot. Not good. Not good. It has to be in a cool, dry place. So the same applies to drugs such as antibiotics. In other words, uh, what they found from the study uh, is that 90% uh, or more than, uh, uh, oh, they did a study of drugs, right? And they found that 90% or more than 100 drugs, both, both prescription and over-the-counter, were perfectly good to use 15 years after the expiration date. So mo even most drugs last well past their expiration date. I've, again, I've used drugs myself. That were expired five years or more, they worked perfectly. I know they worked because they, they, I know they worked. You know, they, they did their job. So, you know, uh, antibiotics, uh, you know, tend to go bad faster. So, you know, you don't want to keep antibiotics around a long time because they're going to lose most of their potency within a relatively short time. But most other drugs last for many, many years. Expired supplements will not cause adverse health effects unless they are rancid fats or oil. Now, that there's exception to this rule about uh, expiration dates. Fats and oil, especially in liquid form like fish oil, those things can go bad much, much faster because they're exposed to oxygen and they get turned rancid. It's not that they're going to hurt you. It's just that uh, you know they're not providing the, the, the health benefits that you expect. When the fat goes rancid, it's basically useless. So any type of oil, like fish oil or any other oil supplement, you should always immediately after opening stick it in the refrigerator and it'll st it ex extends the life considerably. If you keep fish oil in a room temperature, even room temperature, it starts to degrade very, very rapidly. So all fats should uh, fats and oils should be stored in the refrigerator immediately after opening. Don't store your supplements in the kitchen or bathroom unless it's a uh, kitchen closet away from moisture and heat. Because, the, again, the excessive moisture, heat, and light in those places can prematurely cause the loss of potency of the products. 
Instead, keep them in a drawer or place away from light, heat, and moisture. That's the key. If you want your supplements to last way past the expiration date, keep it away from light, heat, and moisture. Dr keep them dry and away from light. Some supplements should be, again, I, I, as I said earlier, some supplements should always be refrigerated, like oil supplements. Exposure to light and oxygen co can cause the polyunsaturated fat content of oils to become oxidized and rancid. Uh, now, uh, other supplements that probably, uh, vitamin E, uh, well, that's kind of borderline. I mean, you, you know, I, I don't keep my vitamin E in, in the refrigerator. Uh, I haven't experienced any rancid vitamin E. It's in pretty, they're in tightly air-sealed capsules. But, you know, they theoretically, you could store vitamin E because it isn't an oil-based. They can be stored in the refrigerator. That'll extend, if you want to, if you don't use your, uh, ingest your vitamin E a lot, you want to extend the time past the expiration date. You could stick the vitamin E in the refrigerator too. Uh, probiotic supplements contain live bacteria. They should always be refrigerated. I've purchased probiotics where it says on the bottle, no need to refrigerate. I don't believe that. These things are live organisms that die out gradually. Uh, they will die much faster if they're left at room temperature compared to refrigerated. So all probiotic supplements should be refrigerated regardless of what it says on the label so that's about it so you know again the main point of this video is most of your supplements are are well well good and potent well past the expiration date and remember the expiration date all it means is, it, is that's the guaranteed date for full potency for any particular supplement it does not mean the supplement goes bad after that uh, just as a um, anecdote uh, I don't drink milk anymore, but when I used to drink milk, I used to, I noticed a, a, a trend. I would purchase the cheaper milk, you know, let's say the house brand of milk, and it, and it always had an expiration date on it. For some reason, and I refrigerate the milk immediately. I didn't keep it out in the open. I put the, the milk in the refrigerator, and yet the milk always, 90% of the time, it went sour as early as three days before the expiration date. Yeah, and I, I, I just couldn't understand it. And I said to myself, well, this milk must have been sitting around for a long time before they put it on the shelf for it to go bad before the expiration date. And then I decided to switch to organic milk, which was like four or five times the price. But I, again, I noticed the pattern. The organic milk, the expiration date was sometimes two and three months. Now compare that with the regular milk, which was something like two weeks. And I said, well, there's something about organic milk that makes it last longer. And sure enough, I never, ever had organic milk go bad on me, go sour. And sometimes I kept, I, I, you know, I didn't drink a lot of milk even when I did drink milk. So sometimes that milk was in the refrigerator for four months, and it was still good. After four months, no sour, taste nothing. I, I cut out milk. Well, there's a lot of reasons why I don't want to get into it in this video. I don't think milk's bad for you. Uh, I just, uh, this, you know, other reasons why I, I just cut it out. But I just illustrate that story to tell you again how, again, these expiration dates, you know, all they mean, all they, get, all they mean is that it guarantees the full potency by that date. And sometimes the expiration date, as in the case of milk, doesn't even work. So that's about it. If you want to have the uh, best and most concise, in-depth information on nutrition, supplements that work, supplements that don't work, exercise science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research that you can use today, uh, uh, women's health and fitness, ergogenic aids, fat loss techniques that really work, and many other topics. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, it's 40 to 50 pages every month. It's more like a monthly ebook. I've seen some of the digital publications, none of them ever, I guarantee you, comes close to the in-depth information offered in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, and there's a good reason for that, because none of the people that are producing these other digital newsletters can match my years of experience. We're talking 58 years of study and empirical experience, that means experience in the gym. I've worked out, a lot of these people that write these digital have never set foot in the gym, they certainly don't have my experience. I, I, I was the science editor of muscle and fitness for over a decade. I, I've written over 8,000 articles. They couldn't, they, they don't come close to what, what I know or what, what I could write. Then none of them are professional writers. 
Uh, I write in plain English. Anyone with a, who's, who went as far as sixth grade will be able to understand my, my uh, writing. I, I explain all technical terms. It's not written like a science journal like some of these other publications where you feel like you're reading a medical journal. I guarantee no matter what your level of education, you will learn something in, from every issue of reading my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So subscribe today. Again, if you, uh, when you subscribe, I will send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where every day I put new information on nutrition, exercise science, medicine, and general health. I do have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers only can send me short questions which I will answer. I do not answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to leave uh, questions or comments under this video. I don't guarantee I will answer the questions uh, that are placed under the video. Uh, I will uh, look at suggestions and, and take it into account for possible topics for future videos, however. Uh, and uh, that's about it, I guess. Uh, if you want to have the uh, best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.